What's up guys? Normally I do news wave in the morning and that's kind of what this is, but really I will say this entire video is mostly going to be about the Sony conference from last night and I think most of us watched it. It started at 9 p.m. my time Eastern and ran honestly only about an hour, which was a little surprising. They had a pre-show as well uh, before their main show. I'm not sure why the pre-show wasn't just added in because there were some okay announcements there, including they showed off Gran Turismo, which is weird that wasn't in the main show. They showed off Undertale, which is a, a good game to move over to your system. I don't know why they didn't want that like spotlighted because even when we went from the pre-show to the main show, they kind of made a big deal about everything starting, right? I, I just don't know why the pre-show was not just part of the main show, but I guess that's the way they wanted to run it. Anyway, let's talk a bit about this Sony conference. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we saw there. Well, the big thing was they started, I, I think they started off well because there was this rumor going around about Monster Hunter moving to the PS4 and technically the Xbox One and PC, which it's going to those as well. It's gonna start on PS4 and Xbox One and then the word is that it's going to then move to the PC later. This is early 2018. No exact release date, just we just know it's early 2018. So that's fine. They got that out of the way instantly. Like that was the first thing we moved into, which is great. I like that we moved right into Monster Hunter, um, put that rumor to bed pretty much right away. I think it's a big announcement for the PS4. It's it's not part, apparently it's not part of the mainline Monster Hunter game. It's like, it's almost like a spin-off of Monster Hunter, but it's designed to attract an audience that has not really uh, moved towards Monster Hunter yet, which even if you don't like, all right, let's say you don't like that it's going to the PS4 for whatever reason. I think it's a good move overall. Maybe you don't like that or the PC. I think it's an awesome move to be going to the PC, by the way. Uh, maybe you don't like that, but keep in mind, this is going to help Monster Hunter as a, if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, it's gonna help the entire franchise grow because it may then attract an audience that would not have played it otherwise. And then maybe they look on to the next Monster Hunter that comes out that is the more traditional sense. This is a way to kind of ease them into it because it's gonna adopt a lot of, of I, I guess, mainstream uh, aspects to it. You know, it's not going to have a lot of the gatherings, have an open world. It looks like it's going to, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it'll be, um, it'll be a lot more streamlined and I think easier for people to kind of, kind of work their way into. Also, like I said, it's just going to help Monster Hunter because now they're going to have a much wider audience that it can then cater to because the PC, obviously, if you move to Steam, it's going to sell well on Steam. Let's be honest. I mean, everyone on Steam is probably going to buy Monster Hunter for the most part. And on the PS4, it'll sell well. The Xbox One is where I don't know how well that'll sell because uh, the audience on the Xbox One definitely enjoys things like shooters more currently or sports games, but you'll probably still get some people from that side buying it. We then moved into another out announcement that I was really happy for, which was Shadow of the Colossus. Looks like it's going to be the like basically the original one that they're going to remaster or pretty much remake essentially for the PS4, and it looks like a, an awesome version of Shadow of the Colossus. I assume it's going to be in 4K support for the PS4 Pro, and it's going to probably have all new graphical uh, graphical improvements, and I'm sure it'll be 60 frames. Let's be, let's be, I mean, it's the PS2 game being moved over. I'm sure it'll be 60 frames per second. So it's going to be great because th that game came out a while ago. There's probably a lot of younger fans right now of the PlayStation who have not played that game, even though they did also remaster it technically on the PS3. Still, there are a lot of people now that are a little younger, they're growing up, and the PS4, believe it or not, is like their first or their second system, so they don't even know what Shadow of the Colossus is. I, I like this move to bring it over, mostly because I want to play it on the PS4 like that. That'd be cool. So I'll pick that one up as well. These were the first two games that they showed, and these are the first two games that I, like these are the two games that I was really excited for when I saw them, but then it kind of started teetering off for me. And like I said, I was pretty hard on Sony, mostly because, now the, or the games they showed, they weren't bad. Um, I think Days Gone looks a little too much like The Last of Us. When I was watching it, 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 it looks good, but I start to kind of see it be Last of Us almost, right? Like I watch it and I'm like, this looks very, very similar. Um, but those types of games do well right now, right? Zombie games are, have been hot for a while. I think like pirate games are becoming like the next zombie uh, series now. We'll get to that later. But 
the zombie zombie genre is always going to be popular. Days Gone looks like it's going to be that like survival type game, and uh, that we still need to see more about it. We got I think like seven or eight minutes of gameplay, and for what they showed us, it looks solid. But um, I, I would like to see a little more to make it a little different from, say, The Last of Us. I mean, it looked kind of like it, it might have been more of an open world style game. But uh, I don't know. Uh, up until they really release it or we see it, it looks just kind of generic, I guess. Like I said, just because The Last of Us has been out. If there was no the La like Last of Us, I would probably say, wow, this looks really good. And I haven't seen this before. And then Sony made, I think, the right move here. They then move pretty much directly into a, a just a slew of VR games, which is what they've needed. I've talked about it for a while. You need choice for VR. And really, even if they didn't all appeal to you, there were so many being shown that I, I, I mean, there was this platformer game that was like VR that was kind of cool. I guess maybe you help, uh, help them through it. Star Child, I think it was. You, you help them through the platforming elements and everything in VR. And really, they showed so many games for VR. That's what they needed. That was the big thing they needed here. They needed to show, give you a reason to buy the PlayStation VR. And, and you know what they did? They did with this like sizzle reel. And if you have a PlayStation VR, you're probably really happy that there, it, there's stuff to play on it now. Um, and, and Sony made the right call to do this. I, I, don't, I still don't feel the need to buy one myself looking at this sizzle reel of games because there's nothing big. It was like a lot of like small announcements, but there were so many, they're gonna build that like that foundation for a big game to eventually come out that makes you wanna buy it. I also really liked God of War, that looked Awesome. Like, I, I, I really like the God of War games. Um, I played 1, 2, 3. I, I didn't do a lot of the PSP ones, even though they were released like a remaster of it. I've pretty much been mostly the main, like that mainline story that they have going on. Um, and man, this new God of War looks awesome. I am so excited for it. It looks, it looks like it's going to be God of War. Like, they showed the gameplay. It looks like a violent beat em up style God of War, so I am really happy for it. It showed like Viking times and everything, and and super violent. I, I like this kind of this different approach they're taking with him, where it's going to be he's like older and weathered and more experienced, and he has his son with him that's kind of learning with him. It's almost like the how they kind of went along with like Old Man Logan, you know, Old Man Wolverine from Logan or Old Man Logan, and I, I like that idea because it's different, right? It's not like it's not like the old God of War where one and two he he didn't really develop much, but now they're gonna have a ton of character development for him and his son. So I'm looking forward to it. But again, it's not out to 2018 is the thing. I so many of these games are just next year, and it's almost like I feel like they're relying on their third party support to get them through the holiday season. Which Destiny 2, yes, that's why you see so much marketing for Sony. I think I'm start we start to figure this out now after E3. They have marketing for uh, Call of Duty, they have marketing for Destiny, they have marketing for FIFA, and I, I think that's why, because they know they weren't gonna have a lot of first party support. They have Knack 2. Uh, Gran Turismo supposedly is gonna be releasing this fall, we think. Um, 2017, unless they hit us with an announcement soon that says it's getting pushed, that's uh, Gran Turismo uh, Sport. But there's not a lot out there that makes you go, yes, I need a PS4 right now, you know? There are good games out, Horizon Zero Dawn with DLC, sure. But 2018 seems to be the year that, that this E3 is building up to. And then we jump to the, after a few other things, we see Detroit, which is a game they've kind of talked about before. Um, still, we don't, it, 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 it looks like more action-y Watch Dogs kind of, I don't know. There's, I still need to see more about it, more actual gameplay. And that's another thing they were kind of missing. Um, they didn't need to do this live, right? They could have, it was trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer. No one came on uh, on stage to try playing a game in front of everybody. They didn't just sit there with a the controller playing, showing it off to people with you know with God mode on, so they can't die. Obviously, uh, none of that happened. We saw one guy the entire time. He popped in and out a few times just to say, "Hey, look, games. Yeah, that was fun." And it was weird. Uh, I feel like it, it, see previous E3s with Sony, they've never been like this. This is this is different. It's almost like. Like, we're getting to a point where next year they'll show up and they'll do what Nintendo does, where they just put out a Direct. Which I'm fine with, because then they script in uh, events where somebody comes to you, talks, or shows stuff off in more like an, an acting fashion, you know, where they're in front of you and they talk to you about this, that, and the other. They have developers come on and do that. Um, it was weird. <laughs> it just, it didn't need to, to be live. But we do get to really the big thing that I was really looking forward to, this entire show, which was Spider-Man. And I, I have to say, 
it looks great. I am so excited for Spider-Man. Some people were saying, oh, the quick time events. Look, quick times are quick times. You're going to see them. They, they help make what would normally be a, a, a cinematic you would just watch interactive in a way, right? I mean, honestly, I would have taken quick time events in, say, Metal Gear Solid 4, where I would sit there and watch a cutscene for half an hour. At least I would be pressing buttons at times, right? Um, I'm fine with the quick time events. They look like they are used well enough. We had the part where he's shooting webbing down at the helicopter to stop from hitting the ground. He hit L2 and R2 just to interact with that. Um, it, the, the combat looked smooth, even though people are saying, well, it looks like it's from, you know, the Arkham, Batman Arkham series. Yeah, that's fine. That's a good fighting system. I, I like that fighting system. So yes, I liked Spider-Man. The visuals looked awesome. I was a little concerned that it was going to be set pieces because when he initially went there, they kind of just had him do some fighting and, and then he chased the guy down. They turned into cinematic, but then he's swinging through the city. And I was like, good. I want this to be more like Spider-Man 2 from the Xbox and the PS2 days because that game is still my favorite Spider-Man game. It is awesome. And I hope that's what it turns into a big open world game where you're kind of, you know, swinging around New York, New York uh, City and everything. And, and it's not just a set piece linear game. But once again, I think they missed the mark with this game. Look, if the game's not ready, you know, it's not ready. But I, I wish one of these games, whether it was God of War or Spider-Man, was ready for 2017, even holiday season. Spider-Man made the most sense to get out 2017 because the movie's coming out soon. There's a lot of hype going to be going around that series when this movie drops uh, next month. I'm not saying it has to come out next month, but even if it made it into the fall with that movie still kind of fresh on everyone's mind, you would get... I, I think a lot of people would be really, really excited for it then. People are still going to be excited. I'm excited. But come on, it, there's a reason they try to do things like release Battlefront when a new Star Wars movie is coming out because the, the hype is there, it's exciting, and people will buy just from pure excitement. They also didn't say early, mid, they just late, they just said 2018, which means it could be any time. We do have the PlayStation experience coming up in December, which means we'll probably see more of this stuff, and that'll be probably further down the line to where they can start giving us release dates in 2018 for some of this stuff. So maybe um, maybe God of War gets a February release date and they tell us there, you know? Maybe it's a March. I, it, it's hard to say. I, I kind of have a feeling, though, that... Um, Something like Death Stranding, for example, be 2019. Maybe that's when we see that next E3. Uh, I feel like Spider-Man might just be holiday season 2018. But at least we know a place. They will be talking about it there. We also know that Kingdom Hearts 3 skipped out, and so did Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> so that was another game that I wanted to see that we saw nothing about. Um, I guess next E3, right? It's an episodic thing. Maybe maybe we finish that whole series up on the PS5 at this point. Um, overall, though, I have to say... I'm, all right, I'm very hard on Sony when it comes to this stuff because generally they deliver. I mean, their E3s are usually solid. Like, they're very good. Um, looking at this E3 compared to their past, it was just not a good E3 from them. That's just, it's just all there is to it. I hold them at a higher standard because they set the bar for E3 most years. They just do. But this was just not one of their strong conferences. Um, I was a little surprised it ended at 60 minutes. Sony is usually the company, guys, that will make you go, man, when is this E3 conference over? It's been two hours. That's generally the feeling you get from Sony. And it's, I honestly, when they came out and said, oh, we're just about done, I was like, but it's been an hour. What, we're done. Um, I don't know. I, I Like I said, I hold them to a higher standard. I understand maybe you thought it was good, and that's fine. You're allowed to think that. I, I encourage people to think differently from myself when I come on camera and present this stuff to you guys. Um, but you know what? I just, I just, I didn't like it. It wasn't one of their best presentations, and maybe next year it'll be better. Uh, maybe the PlayStation Experience, honestly, has a better, has a chance of being better than E3. And it should be. That's, that's their, that's their conference. That's their entire show. But yeah, guys, that's it for uh, Newswave. I just wanted to share my experiences with the PlayStation E3 showing with you guys. And really, I, I'm curious with your opinion on this matter. I want to know what you guys thought about the show. Were you disappointed with it? Were you happy with it? Because like I said, you're allowed to be happy with this, con this conference. You don't have to think it's disappointing just because I say it's disappointing. I want you guys to tell me the truth, what you think down below. I'm, I'm very curious. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it for now. Um, I have to go get ready because the Nintendo presentation and Treehouse is starting soon. Come join myself and Evan. We're going to go on camera 11.30 a.m. Um, Eastern time, a half hour ahead of the conference. And it should be fun. It's only about 25 minutes to half an hour, and then we got Treehouse. So come on by, guys. I'll see you then.